I'm going to give you a presentation, you know, which is really founded on the, the lecture I gave in Stockholm, okay? So, uh, and it's really um, a passion for extreme light, okay? This is what it's about. And I'm going to talk to you about extreme light and why, and why we, I like it and why, why we like it. Because you will see the diversity the vastness, the richest, uh, rich, richest of this field. So first, I would like just to introduce my, uh, my co-laureate, you know, who was also my student. And we met again in Stockholm, you know, 30 years after her PhD, and that's fantastic. Donna Strickland, okay? Now, also, I would like also to... <laughs> I'm not going to introduce this man, of course, but he was just before the ceremony, uh, standing uh, just in front, uh, you know, in a, in a hall room where we get this this fantastic present. Uh, okay, and uh, so I, yeah, there's one thing I would really like to stress: is the passion for extreme light, but also, I this is what I like about uh, Nobel Prize is for the greatest benefit to humankind. This is very, very important. And in, when I'm doing research, you know, I have that in, in my mind. You will see, maybe. So I'm going to talk about the uh, light, about the lasers. But so we, ca we can start with a light bulb. Everybody understands the light bulb. And uh, uh, the light bulb, you know, uh, of course, produces light. But the light that the light bulb is producing is incoherent. Okay, but all the photons, you know, which are emitted by this light have no relationship between each other. Okay, so they are incoherent. And this is a laser. So, uh, so this laser here uh, is uh, uh, the, the light, the photons now, they, 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 they have a relationship between each other. And this is, a, we call that coherent source. Now, uh, I'm going to, the type of lasers we are working, and we are going to talk about for the next hour, they are lasers which emit very short bursts of light. Okay, they are not continuous like the pre previous one, but they emit very short bursts of light. And uh, picosecond, femtosecond, attoseconds. Okay, very, very short. Picosecond is a thousand times shorter than the billionth of a second. <coughs> femtosecond is, um, I'm sorry, uh, femtosecond is a billion times uh, faster than, uh, um, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, it's a million times, a billion times faster than, uh, yeah. and uh, this, and everything, all this story about laser started because of this man, Ted Mehman, okay, who really demonstrated uh, the, um, the laser that we could really now, in, for the first time, produce coherent light. This is uh, the really, uh, that was really the, um, the feat of Theodore Mehman. Uh, in that what happened in 1960, exactly the 16th of May 1960, he showed that the first times this this flashlight, which was emitting coherent light. And there is two things about what are really amazed about this light. You see, this light, you know, the light we like to, um, in terms of energy, produces, you know, uh, photons in a regime of EV electron volt. And there's two things we can do with this, this light. One thing is really you can slow down matters. You can slow down atoms, okay? And you can slow it down to, uh, to almost to a stop. That is, uh, the atoms can move after the, uh, under the actions of, um, of, uh, um, of the laser to a velocity very small, like centimeter per second. That is, you are cooling down the, uh, the atoms. And 
th that was done with the lasers. The energy was in what we call microelectron volt, nanoelectron volt. Now it is. And that opened up, really, uh, the field of what we call atomic molecular optics, cold atoms, metrology, optics. And this was already, you have uh, already a number of, of, uh, of scientists working in this field. We got the, the, the laureate. Uh, the, the Nobel Prize, okay? Uh, now, the other thing that you can do with the light is you do exactly the converse of what you have done. Here you stop almost uh, the light, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, almost stop the light, with, uh, almost stop the particles, and uh, almost to a stop. And now what you can do with light, you can accelerate particles almost <laughs> to the speed of light, okay? Which is another Bandawi, okay? Uh, and, uh, and then you can uh, pro produce particles which have a huge amount of energy. Now it's not nano electron volt, but it's GeV, and hope, hopefully one day it will be TeV. And it's this, this the action of light which is producing these fantastic accelerations. And so that opens up you know, this huge field now, because you have thousands of people working in it, uh, we call ultra-relativistic, ultra-relativistic optics, and so on, accelerator physics. So it's a very, very now uh, active regime. Now, we are going to talk about uh, light, which are very, very short. And wh why we like to have short uh, is because that's one thing we can do. You can, you can really, if you have short pulse of light, you can take very fast movie. That's I'm going to show you in a minute, you know, which is done so well here. But also because power is energy divided by time, you can produce phenomenal, phenomenal uh, power just with a minute amount of energy. You know, and you know that the power is energy divided by time, but because the time is so short, but it, it, you, know, you end up to putting power in a petawatt, say, regime. A petawatt is a thousand times the, to the total power of, that you are pro of, of the uh, global grid okay, in the world. Okay? But of course, we produce a petawatt only during a few femtoseconds. So which is, you know. But any, nevertheless, that just gives you an idea of what you can do with these short pulses. Now, the other thing that we can do is, I mean, we, the other characteristic of what we can exploit when you have a laser is this very, very, you have this very high peak power. This power, you know, can be focused over a small spot which is limited by the wavelength of light. So the wavelength of light is, is about uh, micrometers. And so you can <coughs> produce you know, an extraordinary large uh, intensity and, and, uh, and with uh, photons you know, carries momentum. So, uh, so you have uh, light is also exert pressures. And so you, can, you, can put, you can really generate pressures equivalent of 10 million Eiffel Tower on the tip of your fingers. So it's considerable. And it's really the highest pressure we can produce, in fact, is the pressure by light now. Okay? So this is phenomenal. Uh, uh, also, and you don't expect from the light, right? Uh, from normal light. You know. But here we are talking about, of course, extreme light. Uh, so now I have a graph here, which we are going to use along my talk, which is going to talk a little bit about uh, the intensity, what you can do with intensity, large intensity. So here you have what we call intensities, which we like to express is in watt per square centimeter, but you know, and this is half over the year, this is a progress, okay? The so progress, with starting with 1960, with Mayman, you know, uh, really um, uh, produced his first laser shot. And the intensity are in this regime, tend, tend to be 8 watt per square centimeters, tend to 10 and so on. After we had, I'm sorry, we had uh, techniques where we could increase the intensity. And then uh, at one point, you see that here, we, uh, we couldn't increase the intensity anymore. We, had, we are reaching a plateau. 
okay? And, and it's where we came up with this CPA idea, you know, which made possible now, uh, I will tell you why we had this plateau. Uh, we couldn't go higher. And now we were able now to go much, much higher, okay? And so we had, we are now, you know, uh, in, in, uh, in these regimes, we are shooting in this regime. So you see, we have something but about 10 orders of magnitude, okay? So this morning we were talking, you know, with some of the reporters about, uh, you know, that in science a lot of times, you know, we are talking about huge quantum st steps, you know, very large steps, but this is, this is one. Clearly where we, we were at a 10 to the 13, 10 to the 14, and now we, are at, we will be in 10 to the 24th and shooting for 10 to the 29. Okay, so this is, you know, this now is the new trajectories of the light, which, uh, so we are somewhere here now, somewhere here, okay, and we want to go higher, and I'm, I'm going to describe to you uh, the different step, okay? So the first, I'm going to start with uh, when the light, what you can do with a CPA system when you are at uh, 10 to the 14 watt per square centimeter, relatively, uh, relatively small amount of energy, but uh, power in this regime, which is sufficient to do very exciting things, uh, especially for society. You can really now do eye surgery, micro-machining and so on, and I will come back after for the rest of the application. So uh, let's talk about uh, what you can do in this regime and turn to the 14 or so watt per square centimeters. So um, by the way, that's one thing here. Why did we have this, uh, this problem, this plateau? Well, the, the plateau is coming from the, the following reason. If, if we are really uh, trying to amplify light with amplifier. These amplifiers are, are made of, say, it can be crystals, it can be, but usually it's transparent, it's being used, as, as we say, to amplify the pulse. And what happened is, you see that if you try to amplify these, these beams, and if the transverse, you know, uh, the transverse um, profile of this beam is alter by, by small fluctuations, these fluctuations are going to grow, you know, when it's going to tra traverse, you know, this, this. And at one point, it's going to burn because the intensity in this peak is so big that it's going to <coughs> burn the, the material. And you, are, you can really, after that, toss away this optics, which is very expensive, okay? So you, you uh, this is... Uh, 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 so this is a reason that we had, we had to stop at this plateau, you know, we had to circumvent this plateau, okay. And in order to circumvent this plateau, what we, uh, we use this CPA technique uh, is, and how does it work, uh, is, so remember, we had to amplify a short pulses, but before we amplify it, we are going to change it, okay. We are, in fact, to make a very long pulse. So here we have a short pulse that we want to amplify, it, okay? And then uh, the pulse now is going to be stretched. And I'm going to, so in order to stretch it, we are using what we call gratings, okay? Which is, is a, a, um, a device which is really spreading the, uh, the, the spectrum of your beam. And, uh, and also um, uh, uh, the, the beam. Uh, so we are going now to, to, to elongate, elongate the pulses. So we start from, say, femtoseconds, and we end up with nanoseconds here, you know. So elongate by, by a large amount, like 10,000 times or something like that. As a consequence of that, because you elongate the pulse, you are going to decrease the, the, the amplitude of the pulse you know, accordingly. And then you can now, here the pulse is, is as a low, low intensity, okay? So you can be amplified, and it's amplified, and so you have a long pulse which is amplified. So now what you do, you do the converse of what you have done here, and you are going to compress it, okay? So you, now you have a pulse the compression. So, so you uh, avoid the problem of intensity by doing this. But that was a huge, 
huge effect, you know, has helped to, to boost the field by 10 to the 5, you know, which is enormous, of course, and, and made uh, possible all kinds of applications. So now, as I said, I'm sorry, I, I went a little bit, we are I'm going to now to walk you through some applications. I, I like eye surgery or micro-machining because I'm staying just right here, okay? I'm going to fix my intensity at this level. So, uh, for instance, if you are working, if you want really to do some machining, you can use a laser, okay? Now, if you're using a continu continuous wave lasers, uh, if you want really to uh, micro-machine something, uh, or machine something, you are going to, have, the light is going to be absorbed by the target, so the thing that you want really to machine. You, is going to abs be absorbed, and you are going to heat up. And if you want really to really to machine, you have to elevate the temperature to the fusion temperature, you know, so you can really make a dent in your material. Uh, now, of course, you have a long pulse. You are going to uh, the heated zone will be very large, and so you won't be able really to do something feature of very small size. Now, if you, use, you, if you are using nanosecond pulses, of course, the heated zone will be, will, will be uh, much shorter because the, the heat that is produced by the laser is going to spread over a small quantities, but still, and so you are going to, to evaporate, you are going to heat the material over uh, a, smaller, a smaller volume than what you were doing here. Now, if you are using femtosecond laser, you know, uh, you can really, uh, the, f the, the pulse is extremely short, 10 minus 15 seconds, okay? Uh, and so the heat doesn't have the time to move, okay? So you take, uh, uh, the laser is going to be absorbed by your target only over a very small volumes, okay? And uh, you won't have the time to spread. So you can really, we, you can remove a very small amount of matter, and that is the type of things, you see the result that you can produce. You can produce extremely well-defined, you know, uh, features on a target uh, with micro nanometers, in fact. Uh, uh, you can make nanometer, micrometer features, okay? And it works very, very nicely. Now, one thing that you can do also, and this is, is, is being big, and we discover, in fact, by accident, because uh, my student, one of my students, you know, adjusting this laser, got it in the eyes, uh, and, and uh, which is not funny when we say that it was not funny because we thought that we are, were going, to, I was in a state at Michigan, so they don't really, they are very serious about safety, and say, well, we are going to close the lab, okay? <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, we, we took the student, took it to the hospital, and the, uh, the doctor looked at uh, the retina of my student and said, hmm, yeah, you got hit by the laser, okay? What kind of laser do you have? And uh, my student, who was a PhD student, uh, knew perfectly what the laser was. He said, well, you know, I have a femtosecond laser, but at that time, it was one of the the very first lasers, it was, uh, uh, he said, yeah, we have a Thai sapphire laser and so on. You know. But why are you asking me this question? He said, well, I'm asking you this question because the damage you have in your retina is perfect. <laughs> perfectly round, you know, perfectly round. So immediately we understood that we had something, something interesting, you know. And, uh, uh, of course, and it was funny because we had my student who got the eye, was at Stockholm and so on. And by the way, he's, 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 he went, because, as he said, it was perfect, which meant it was extremely small. So the brain was able really to, uh, to compensate, you know. And now he's, he's perfectly fine. He was at Stockholm and so on. He was, uh, he was nice. But that is the type of things, you know, sometimes, you know, you have the, the uh, uh, discovery comes with serendipity, you know. And uh, any, anyway, so, um, so we understand that we had something very exciting because for the eyes, you want to have something, pre uh, you know, 
uh, very precise because lasers were used in the, uh, before, but with long pulses. So you are making a huge crater in, in your, so. Anyway, so uh, here, for instance, we show that we could really, for instance, you can focus the beam into a cornea, cornea, you know, which is transparent, the cornea. But it's transparent for low intensity light, okay? Now, you see that when the pulse is, is focused, it goes through, through low intensity and then its intensity increases to reach its maximum at focus. And, and so you can decide, you can adjust the position of this lens, so you can decide that, for instance, you can, you can adjust the laser so it is only accept, uh, is, is, is going to ablate the material only at, at a given position. And you, are, you can make some, what we say, flaps, for instance, for, uh, for uh, if you are interested by LASIK, so, so, because you can move now the, 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 the laser and you can make uh, flaps. And I'm going to show you this. So here, for instance, you know, the, uh, uh, flap is, 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 is uh, used so you can correct uh, for uh, visions. Um, and so this is a flap that we can do with femtoseconds. This is a flap that we can do with a longer pulse, you know, 50 picosecond or so. And you see that uh, in one case you have a, a very good exquisite control uh, and the other case you have a, you have a mess, okay? So, so that was very, very nice. So now I'm going to show you, um, I hope so, uh, um, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, going, I'm showing you now um, the uh, what the creation of a slap, a flap, where we focus the laser into the cornea, okay? And so you see that, you see that uh, the, the laser spot moves and cuts, you know, within the cornea, the thickness of the cornea, okay? It cuts, and now we come to a point where, you know, we have, we made this flap, now we, it's, it's a time for the surgeon to, we, to lift up the, the, the flap. So for people who are a little bit sensitive about, uh, you know, <laughs> you, can, you can close your eyes for, uh, for about a minute or so, not even so. So this is, so you, well, this is pe what the people are, are going through, you know, when they want really to correct your, and uh, so you see that you have, uh, you, you, you can lift up the flap, reposition the flap, this is very important also for, not only for a vision correction, but also now for, for um, cornea uh, transplant and so on. I mean, many applications. Okay, so now uh, we move uh, from the gory stuff. We, we are going to now to also, uh, if we increase, I increase my intensity, okay? I'm increasing my intensity, and I'm going to be in regimes where I will really do some atomic physics. And of course, really the group who is here is uh, which excellent, which is top in the world, is of course uh, working in at atosegon physics. And uh, so here you are at 10 to the 15, 10 to the 16 watt per square centimeters. And what you are going to do is to produce, we start with five femtoseconds, but it's not enough for us. We want try to have much shorter pulses, okay? So what they do, uh, take five femtoseconds and they shorten the pulse. In order to shorten the pulse, I'm not going to go, but you have to pass your high intensity pulse, which is being, C which is also using CPA, by the way, and, and you are going to focus into this uh, gas jet, and lo and behold, what happened is you are going to produce some XUV radiations. I'm not going to go into details because it's too much. And so, and, but this, if you are going to produce a very a shorter pulse in 100 attoseconds, okay? 10 man, so attosecond, remember, it's a billionth of a billionth of a second, okay? Well, you have 100 attoseconds, so pretty short. And uh, so now, what you have, you have this pulse and this pulse are synchronized, okay? So you will be, you'll be able already to do interesting stuff. For instance, you will be able to do a movie 
a movie of, of really atoms moving. I mean, plus, it's exactly more what you are going to show, is uh, the charge, the charge around an atom, which is going to move at very high ve velocity, but we won't really, you, have, you can change because electrons are very light, so you can change very fast. And so um, we are going to capture the motions of this charge moving ar around the molecules, okay? So the molecules now, part of the molecule is far part of the amino groups, it's here, you see? So we excite, we excite with this red pulse, which is the fundamental. We excite, or they excite, you know, the uh, NH2. So you are going now to uh, this group, which are electron uh, charges, are going to change, move, and, and you are going to be able right, to track the, uh, the, uh, the motion of this bar. But look, what is phenomenal is, you know, you have only uh, uh, motions which occur during four femtoseconds, you know, you are able really to make a, a, a movie of that, okay? This is absolutely phenomenal, okay? Uh, that you can really follow what the atoms are doing under the action of light, you know, in this time scale. So really this is, uh, this is really is done here, okay, uh, by all the group of, um, of course, uh, uh, Sandro, the Silvestri, Nisali, and so on. Beautiful work, okay, beautiful work. Um, okay, now we are, we were here, right, at the second physics. Now we are going to crank up the, the intensities. And so what's going to happen here? We are completely going to change the making almost change uh, optics. Why? Are, because here the intensity is such, the intensity is such, okay, that now the electrons which are moved by the laser field, by light, okay, the field is so large that the electrons are going to be relativistic during the, during the wavelength of time, of, of, uh, of the pulse. During the wavelength of pulse, it becomes relativistic. So now the mass of the electrons is going to change. But also, there's one thing that we, you know, when you're studying optics, you know that it's an electromagnetic wave. Yeah, but in optics, when we are studying optics, we always talk about electric. You know, we always uh, put under the rug, you know, the, the magnetic part of the electric beam. Well, but now the magnetic part comes because you have uh, the action, the, because the, the Lorentz force, which is a combination of two terms of elect electrical uh, force and um, magnetic force, which is expressed by uh, E, uh, B, B cross B, okay, V cross B, okay, V vector B. Sorry for a little bit of this jargon, but so because uh, uh, the field now is close, uh, it's a V over C, and because of the velocity of the electron reaches the, uh, the, the velocity of light, okay, you have an uh, electromagnetic force going really in a propagation direction. And you have this extraordinary, very strong force, okay, which is really, you know, of course, at the origin of the light pressure. So in this regime, you are going to be able to accelerate particles violently, you will see. Um, and, and then yeah, we, uh, in this, uh, if you crank up a little bit more uh, the field, uh, more, a um, lot more, but um, uh, then you are going to accelerate protons, okay? So here we are going to show that we accelerate electrons, but they are light, okay? And, uh, but to, to, veloc to velocity near the speed of light, okay? And when you go higher, you are going to be able really to accelerate protons, okay? So I'm going now, let's see what happened with, with, um, with relativistic optics. How can we accelerate particles? 
Well, what we are going to do to accelerate particles, we are going to have, I will show you, is something which is analogous, in fact, of uh, a surfer surfing on, on, on a wave, OK? And here you can consider that you have the electrons, and here you have, you have kind of the wave. And the wave, in fact, is produced, is going, is when will be a plasma wave, OK? So we have a laser pulse, strong pulse, OK? Um, which is focused into a gas jet. Because the pulse is very strong, OK? We, uh, is going to ionize and produce a plasma. A plasma is kind of a soup between electron and proton. I'm sorry to be. And, and what you are going to also do, because of this fa fabulous light pressure that we have seen, we are going to make in this very, uh, in this plasma, we are going to have these strong waves. And you are going to these electrons. You know, these electrons, of course, which are in a, in a plasma, inherent in the plasma, are going to fall, go in a trough of this wave, and they are, in the meantime, they are going to be accelerated by, trapped by the wave, and, and will move along with the laser. And they will move very close to the speed of light. And over very, uh, about centimeter size, you can take an electron, electrons accelerated to GeV. OK, now GeV, if you use conventional technology, you know, uh, to go to the GeV, it will take hundreds of meters. OK? So when you see a cyclotron, for instance, uh, or synchrotrons, uh, uh, you know, it's a, they are huge machines. They are GeV machines, but they are kind of kilometers in size. Well, here we can do that in over centimeters, okay? Which is, of course, uh, phenomenal. Now, and of course, what the dream is, of course, uh, is tried to, one of the dream, is, is really to, to shrink the size of accelerator. You know that high energy physics, you know, is, a, of course, absolutely fundamental physics that we have all to learn and uh, and respect, and, but the problem is, of course, in order to study the fundamental uh, physics, you need to build these extraordinary large uh, uh, accelerators. And uh, from this is a CERN, you know, this LHC accelerator at CERN, and they are 27 kilometers, okay, to go to the TEV. Well, it will be very nice and certainly very cheap, uh, much cheaper if we could really uh, use, um, right now we are using technology is basically MEV per centimeters. And if we were able really to take a technology with GEV per centimeters, we will gain a factor of 1,000, which means 27 kilometers, you know, becomes hundreds of meters. So, and that is, of course, uh, this is what is very, very important. Yeah, for instance, here, we have, um, if we were, uh, so here, for instance, as I said, if these very large 27, uh, 27 kilometers uh, machines could be, could, which is, could, could fit on a football field, which is already, you know, an enormous uh, accomplishments. And clearly, this is really uh, the technology which is really considered as a next step for high energy physics. There is nothing, nothing which can be better than this <laughs> right now. Um, in the horizon. Now, we, would like, we could go a step further, another thousand times um, f uh, even smaller. And inst instead of using visible light, you know, right now we only talk about these very high energy pulses you know, high intensity pulses are in the visible. They are at one micrometer or so. Now, if you were using X-rays, instead of doing that, you know, in terms of visible, we go to X-rays, then we can show that we could really use solids instead of this gas jet. We could use solids. And, uh, and 
and take the electrons, I mean the plasma, which in fact uh, sits in the solid, uh, because you have this, these charges, this a lot of electrons and so on, and the plasma can be produced by the laser. And, but this time, it's of course, it's going to be an X-ray laser, X-ray pulse. So we could really now, uh, because of very high density of the electrons, we could produce up to TeV per centimeter, which means CERN on the finger, okay? So of course, this is a, dr is a dream, of course. Uh, maybe this, this is my visionary side, which is really speaking here, but uh, anyway, so this. So you see that there is very fascinating things which are really around the corner here. And uh, now uh, I talked about the electrons, but we can also use the laser to produce protons. And, and protons at MeV, and we hope, uh, I don't have the time to expand on it, but uh, at a GeV level, okay? That means the mass of the, the, mass of the um, L, uh, protons is GeV, okay? So, um, uh, so um, now, well, I'll come back to that. So now, if you have uh, protons, well, I'm going to show you this. Uh, so we, we have seen that we can produce very high intensity light. We can produce very high energy electrons. We can produce also high energy protons. But we can mix them. You know, this is, uh, you know, you take, look, you take one laser, okay, high intensity laser, and you are producing all these, these radiations and these particle energy at all kinds of, energy you want. And that's the reason why I call that is really a universal source, okay? Because what's exciting after that is all this, the energy that you are, these pulses, these electron pulses, these proton pulses, these X-ray pulses, and so on, are synchronized. Synchronized on a femtosecond time scale. So we can play, you can mix them you know, and, and get some other type of radiations. So this is, uh, you know, and so this is really uh, fabulous because you, from this one, one, uh, one source, one energy, you can produce a, a huge platters of, of, um, of radiations and particle energies. So now, Let's talk about, I, I can talk, you know, I have to, 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 to move quickly now. So uh, one, I, I just talked about, for instance, we can use protons, okay? We can produce protons uh, soon at 100, we do that 100 GeV, but 100 MeV, but we could really try to do it at, at GeV level. Uh, and so there's one for medical application, which is very important. In fact, I'm going to, to talk about ap application in medicine uh, right now, just to be uh, close to society. Uh, and so you have, here we can see that um, if we, we, could use, uh, we could use protons for what we call proton therapy, okay? Um, you know, uh, using proton for therapy, uh, um, the advantage of proton over other type of sources is the protons, you know, can go, can move uh, freely, I mean, we say, can move without scattering over a certain distance in, 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 some, in your tissue. And at one point that we can adjust, can be absorbed, okay? So, so the, the result is that if you have a tumor somewhere sitting in, in, in a tissue, then you can adjust, you can adjust uh, uh, the distance where you don't, you don't burn the tissues between, uh, between you know, the um, input to the tumor. You, you leave this healthy tissue intact, okay? This is very important. And just, you can address, deposit your energy only on the tumor, you know? And this can be done with protons. Of course, this is being done, but with conventional machines, which are very big and so on. And our dream, of course, is trying to do it now 
with much more compact systems, okay? So this is an example of proton therapy, yeah. Uh, now, of course, if you have protons, you can produce neutrons. I'm going too fast here. And you can really produce some radionuclides that can be uh, implanted in the tumor of a patient. And so, and so you can do some therapy this way. And you can also use uh, this uh, nuclei that you um, mm, uh, also for nuclear diagnostics and so on. So what is nice is the fact that you have a system, you, could, you can envision that you have an hospital, you know, where you can really do this, all these nice, nice uh, uh, medicine, you know, nuclear medicine into an hospital, okay? Right now, nuclear medicine is very important, but you have to, pro you have to first of all, I mean, it's difficult really to, to treat a patient with proton therapy and so on. But in, you have also to have to, to, to have, uh, you have to produce, for instance, all these radionuclides you know, somewhere else and be shipped to the, to the hospital that takes time and so on. So that limits the number of nuclei that you, you can use. Anyway, okay, so now, of course, but my dream, and this is a big dream, okay, my dream, of course, will be really maybe to, to use the lasers to, be, to produce neutrons and to, uh, to address these problems of nuclear waste, okay? Trying to transmute the nuclear waste uh, from uh, uh, something which is lasting really a long time into something which is very short time. Now, I, I have to say this is maybe in futures, okay? And a lot of work has to be done. So we are not right now uh, ready for that, okay? Don't get excited, okay? Don't, don't give me a call, you know, just to say. <laughs> uh, but this is one of the, my dream, okay? And uh, just to, to show you how it works is, uh, for instance, uh, transmutations, you know, works if you have, say, uh, um, uh, um, a nucleus, okay, from uh, which is, uh, you know, like technetium, Te technetium, for example, which has a, a lifetime, you know, uh, also radi radiations, um, uh, uh, radiation are emitted for hundreds of thousands of years. Now, if you change the making of the nucleus, okay, by, say, adding a neutrons, a, a neutrons into the nucleus, so the, this, this stays becomes an isotope of this nucleus. When this is the isotope here, this, say, we call that technetium-99, for instance, okay, has a half-life of 200,000 years. Now you add this nucleus here into um, in this neutron in the nucleus, and the isotope B, you know, now we have, could have a half-life of 16 seconds, okay? Of course, I mean, we don't, uh, you know, but we, you can, you have a handle where you can really change the lifetime of these uh, uh, ra radioactivities. And, and sometimes uh, the nucleus, you know, becomes uh, stable, okay? So it doesn't emit anything. Uh, so this is really a few examples, okay? of what we can do with extreme light, okay? So my conclusions here is, uh, is in conclusions, extreme light is capable of generating, so this is the message I want you to take home, okay? In conclusion, extreme light is capable of generating the largest field, the largest accelerations, the largest temperature, and the la largest pressure. It ca and I think it carries a hope, you know, an opportunity for the futures, a lot of hope and opportunity for the future of science and society. And uh, really, I, I'm going to stop there. But before I stop, I just want to say that there's one thing which, and this, oh, no.
Uh, uh, yes. And I want to say one thing is that, you know, uh, I believe that the best is yet to come. And I'm addressing to all these students which are here today in the audience. Thank you very much.